Right now, a former village of McFarland president is facing a charge of child sexual assault. We have the latest details on the incident and when he's expected in court. Also, an investigation is underway into what caused a deadly plane crash this morning in Watertown. And later, a neighborhood is evacuated this morning after a gas leak. What investigators say caused it? Welcome to News 3 Now at 6. New today, a former village of McFarland president is charged with sexually assaulting a child. 74-year-old Bradley Zaboter is charged with one count of first-degree child sexual assault of a person under the age of 13. Braden Ross has been looking into this case and joins us now with those details. Braden? Yeah, according to court records, the victim, a five-year-old girl, told her mother several times that Zaboter touched her inappropriately. She said she thought it happened about six or seven times. The victim told investigators Zaboter asked her if she wanted to see a magic trick before allegedly touching her and himself inappropriately. Zaboter served as Z village president from 2012 until 2021 when he decided not to run for re-election. In 2019, he won the race for president by just two votes. Now, the village of McFarland said the Dane County Sheriff's Office is investigating the assault. They said, quote, Mr. Zaboter's term as village president ended in April 2021, and he has not served in any official capacity since that time. The Sheriff's Office declined to comment, saying the investigation is still ongoing. Zaboter is expected to be in court on July 13th. Braden, thank you. And we are learning new information about the Monroe School District staff member charged with child sexual assault. According to court records, a six-year-old victim told authorities that Andrew Swanston had sexually assaulted her while she was sleeping in a tent earlier this month. At first, Swanston denied the accusations, but later said he was in the tent but didn't remember what happened because he had too much to drink. Court officials said a cash and signature bond of $50,000 for two felony charges. At least one person is dead today after a plane crashed near a park in Watertown. The National Transportation Safety Board is leading the investigation. News 3 Now's Catherine Merck has been there all day and joins us live with the latest. Catherine, what can you tell us this evening? Charlotte Brandt Cork Park is still entirely surrounded with police tape as officers continue to investigate the deadly plane crash that happened here this morning. I want you to take a look at your screen for the video from above that was shot from a helicopter earlier today. Police told us the call came in around 9 this morning. We did learn this afternoon that this crash was fatal. A local lawmaker says that at least two people from two different families died in this crash. The plane crashed shortly after taking off at the Watertown Municipal Airport. Neighbors who live near the scene described what they heard and saw early this morning. I was just sitting at the desk working and the kids were playing around. And me and my son all of a sudden were sitting there and we hear just a, a loud kind of boom and a shake, you know, in the house. Throughout the day, we've continued to see all types of first responders coming in and out to the area. And this is still a very active scene as we head into the end of the day here at the park in Watertown. We're going to continue to provide updates as they become available on channel3000.com and on our social media platforms. Reporting live in Watertown, I'm Catherine Merck, News 3 Now. The Salt County Sheriff's Office is searching more than 5,000 acres again as they continue to look for James Yablonski. The 13-year-old has been missing since the overnight hours Sunday into Monday. Since the search began on Monday, the Sheriff's Office has had 20 K-9 units and over 100 officers. K-9s did get a scent at a makeshift campsite that was found, but other than that and a family car, signs of James have been somewhat scarce. The search will continue tomorrow. Meanwhile, in Madison, police are searching for a missing 17-year-old girl who hasn't been seen since yesterday morning. Mauizio Chavaria was last seen around 9.30 a.m. when she walked away from her home in the 8300 block of Flagstone Drive on Madison's far west side. Police did not say whether she may be with anyone or where she could be heading. She was last seen wearing a green summer jacket and pajama pants. Anyone with information is asked to call Madison Police. Well, temperatures warming back up. Let's check the first warm forecast now with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canaldi. And notice the warmer temperatures. We also notice the haze overhead. That is more wildfire smoke from Canada that continues to drop southward across the state. 
Let's take a look at an air quality advisory that's in effect until noon tomorrow for most of Wisconsin away from Lake Michigan and even extends back into most of Minnesota as well. Visible cloud tracking, you can see that hazy band of, of uh, smoke and clouds dropping southward uh, from north to south across Wisconsin. There are some thicker clouds in there where there might be a shower or two that pops up, but right now uh, things look pretty sparse. There might be a sprinkler or two out there, but uh, for the most part, uh, that's pretty much it. Low temperatures this morning started out in the middle 50s, pretty comfortable, but you can see current temperatures are into the 80s. Madison at 81, cooler closer to Lake Michigan. Temperatures in the 60s there, but out to the west still 87 in Boscoville, 86 degrees in La Crosse. And here in Dane County, temperatures range from 79 in Deerfield to 84 degrees in Sauk City. So warmer in the west, cooler in the east. For this evening, look for temperatures to drop in to about 70 degrees by late evening. Again, we'll have that wildfire smoke overhead. Uh, that will continue at least into tomorrow morning. I'll tell you how long, how much longer than that the smoke will last and whether we have any chances for rain in a few minutes. An evacuation order has been lifted after a gas leak on Madison's east side. Homes on the 3800 block of Atwood Avenue had to be evacuated this morning when construction crews punctured a gas line. Traffic and Madison Metro buses were diverted from the area during the evacuation, while other drivers were asked to avoid the area until it cleared. MGE &E officials said the leak didn't cause any impacts to gas service in nearby homes or businesses. Recognizing Juneteenth as a holiday is a movement that's picked up steam among some employers nationwide in recent years. Now, our local chapter of the NCAACP is pushing for a particular industry to pick it up here. Tahalil Mohadeen has the story. That's right. The president of Dane County's NAACP tells me he wants to see UW Health become a leader this year in giving their employees off on that holiday. But UW Health says it's not that simple. Two years after it became official, Juneteenth uh, as an annual celebration. Federally, leaders in the local NAACP chapter want to take Juneteenth recognition a step further. And this is an opportunity to not just bring forth words through vision statements and, and, and uh, 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 written words, but it's also a time to show action. They want all area employers to make Juneteenth a paid holiday, but asking one area health care provider especially to lead the charge. UW Health is one of the larger employers in the county. They say they're pushing UW Health to be the first provider in the area to do it and pointing to large disparities in health care outcomes as a primary factor, calling the push a way to build a diverse workforce better equipped equipped to handle diverse patients. Putting this particular paid holiday in place is a commitment to the principles of Juneteenth, the legacy of our country, and the commitment to diversity. It's a step the folks at UW say they're not quite ready to make. Actually, some of the federal holidays are currently not recognized also at UW Health Veterans Day is actually a good example. Certainly no other health system um, in Dane County, Juneteenth is currently considered um, a, a holiday for all staff. For them, they say their commitment to a more diverse workforce and better health outcomes for all is in their actions. The whole premise of our um, RN or nursing apprenticeship program is to really make sure that we create a pathway um, towards nursing, but with a specific lens into diversifying nursing, which hasn't been a very diverse field. And the conversation on how to best recognize Juneteenth is one they're willing to have. UW officials say one thing they are considering to accommodate Juneteenth and other holidays is a floating day employees can use at their discretion. I reached out to SSM Health and Unity Point, other major hospitals in our area. They didn't provide information on their policies, but UW says the holiday isn't recognized among any of the health providers in the area. A first warn traffic note for you this week. Part of East Washington Avenue in downtown Madison will close for construction this Friday. It is part of the Blair Street Corridor Reconstruction Project. Westbound lanes will close, but eastbound lanes will remain open. The closure will last around six hours beginning at 9 a.m. Detour signs will be posted. Drivers can use South Blair, East Main, and South Franklin Streets. The full project will wrap up this fall. After the break, a legendary coach is honored at the state capitol today. Also, Governor Evers heads to Monroe to highlight the state's dairy industry. We'll be right back. Steinhoffel's amazing Buy More, Save More sale is the perfect time to spruce up your home. Take an extra $100 off $19.99, $200 off $29.99, or $300 off $39.99 or more. The more you buy, the more you save.
Refresh your home with a new bedroom set, cozy sofa, or new dining set. You'll even find special mattress deals too. So shop today in store or online at Steinhoffels.com. Relax, it's Steinhoffels. It's High V's one day sale, one day only this Thursday. Ground beef or turkey, just $2.98 for a one pound roll. Red Baron pizza, just $2.99. Ivy cottage cheese, just 99 cents. Fresh Express chopped salad kits, just $2.99. Bushes baked or grilling beans, just $1.88. And buy one, get one free on a two entree Ivy Chinese meal. Don't miss the one day sale, one day only this Thursday at Ivy. Get 11% off great gifts for dad at Menards. Known for innovative designs and affordable prices. Works cordless power tools are powered by 20-volt power share batteries. They're compatible with over 75 Works power tools and lawn and garden equipment. Pick up the Works 20-volt drill kit for just $49.99 after rebate. Get jobs done around the house with the Works 20-volt brand nailer. It's just $149.96 after 11% rebate now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Have you ever been challenged, been tried, made a pact with your own limits? Have you been here, there, places no one should go? If you have, then you know that whatever you're capable of, so are we. No wonder Ford SUVs lead in brand loyalty. Now get an Explorer and get 0% APR financing for 36 months, 1,000 low APR cash, and 1,000 retail bonus cash. See your dealer. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Governor Evers is celebrating Wisconsin's dairy industry by visiting Chalet Cheese in Monroe today. Chalet Cheese previously received dairy processor grants from DATCAP to update their production practices and facility and create a marketing development plan for their operation. The governor proposed an additional $1.6 million in funding for the Dairy Processor Grant Program in his 2023-25 to 25 biennial budget. Uh, anyway, this is a great group of people that work hard and uh, uh, really contribute to the $45 billion industry dairy is in the state of Wisconsin. And uh, so it's great to be here. June is Dairy Month, and we're, we're celebrating that. We're the Joint Committee on Finance gave the Dairy Processor Grant Program an additional $600,000 in May. The governor ended his day on a tour of Arena Cheese, another company that received the Dairy Processor Grant. Paracycling athletes from around the country gathered in Janesville today to qualify for the 2023 Paracycling Road World Championships. More than 60 para-athletes competed in the 12 different categories and divisions, including two-wheel bicycle, tricycle, and tandem cyclist. The World Championships will take place in August in Glasgow, Scotland. The cycling event is just one of many events at the Paralympics, including swimming, wheelchair basketball, and more. Meanwhile, at the state capitol today, a legendary basketball coach is honored as a hometown hero by the As Wisconsin Assembly. Coach Jerry Pettigrew retired this year after 54 years of coaching. 52 of those years were spent with the Cuba City Boys basketball team. The Hometown Hero Award is a legislative honor given to distinguished individuals who've worked hard to make a difference in their community. Still ahead, why it's going to cost electric vehicle drivers more to keep theirs registered here in Wisconsin. Plus, the state legislature is poised to approve a significant funding bill that will give much needed aid to towns and cities. And when is the next time we'll see some rain? Gary has the complete forecast when we come back. Don't miss Wisconsin's best deals this summer only at Ashley's multi-million dollar clearance event. Everything must go. Save up to 84% store-wide, plus special interest financing for 72 months, only at Ashley. Attention, Wisconsin veterans. I'm Tony Evers, the governor of Wisconsin. If you are a veteran struggling to pay for rent, utilities, or other life-sustaining services, I want you to know that the Veterans Rental Assistance Program is here to help. The Veterans Rental Assistance Program was created by and for people living in Wisconsin with benefit approvals being issued to veterans in just days, not months. You have already made a most noble sacrifice. You shouldn't have to continue doing so. 
We are here to support you. With pride in the way, it's never easy to ask for assistance, but rest assured, we are here to help. The VRAP team is standing by to help. So call 833-WISVRAP or visit VRAPWI.com. You've always been there for us. We want you to know that we're here for you. On behalf of the state of Wisconsin, thank you. Are you sure about this? I got this. I watched the video online. Oh. <coughs> I'm good! I'm good! Oof. I can't help you with that bruised ego, but I can help you replace this roof safely. Let the experts at Felco do the heavy lifting this summer with 30% off roofing and siding. Plus, no interest until 2025. 30% off roofing and siding ends soon. Hurry. Call now. Call 866 for Feltco. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees, the Doobie Brothers. Live in concert, the 50th anniversary tour. The Doobie Brothers. Reese Stevensfield, June 21st. Get tickets now at Ticketmaster.com. Produced by FPC Live. Don't miss Wisconsin's best mattress deals this summer, only at Ashley's multi-million dollar clearance event. Everything must go. Save up to 84% off top mattress brands, plus special interest financing for 72 months. Only at Ashley. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. A bill that would help fund the local governments is getting its final vote in the state capitol after months of debate. Political reporter Will Keneally is live at the capitol with the latest. Charlotte, this is the kind of funding that we've heard from mayors literally helps them keep the lights on. So it's a really big move that we've seen the final passage of this here tonight. And within the last few minutes, the state Senate has signed off on the proposal. Some area Democrats join Republicans in supporting the motion, including Melissa Agard from Madison and Mark Spritzer from Beloit. Now, Assembly Speaker Robin Voss says what the legislature will ultimately approve tonight reflects those months-long negotiations between Republican lawmakers and the governor. I've said before, and I'll say it again, many of our members still have heartburn about the idea that the voters are not the ones deciding, but it was part of a broader agreement, so I think most of us are in a pretty good place on that. We heard from Speaker Voss there earlier today that the local funding bill is now working its way through the state assembly. Now, in a matter of days, it will head to the governor's desk. And we caught up with Governor Evers during a stop in Monroe earlier today. I have not had the chance because I've been on the road to talk to staff. I know that uh, uh, that's being discussed right at the, this moment. And yeah, I'm concerned. I mean, we should be able to get this thing done. Now, there are a lot of moving pieces to this bill, for example, requiring Milwaukee to put certain amount of money towards law enforcement and also raise a local sales tax. But across the board, we're expecting to see roughly 20 percent more state funding go to these municipalities like Madison here. Now, we don't know exactly how much Madison will get. This is all happening, obviously, within the last few hours here of the state capitol. And we're still waiting for legislative lawyers to kind of parse some of that lingo and actually give us a final number. We should expect to see that in the next coming days here. Reporting from the Capitol, Will Keneally, News 3 Now. Wisconsin's Legislative Finance Committee has voted to raise electric vehicle registration fees to $175 a year. It was previously $100 a year. Registering an electric vehicle in Wisconsin is already more expensive than registering a gas vehicle or hybrid, which cost $85 and $75 a year, respectively. The Legislative Fiscal Bureau estimated that the increased fees will bring in an additional $3.3 million to the state's transportation fund over the next two years. Democrats raised concerns that the added fees would discourage people from buying electric vehicles. Well, sky's a little hazy today as temperatures warmed up. Here's Gary with your complete forecast. Yeah, the warm weather is going to stick around for a while. Tomorrow will be just a few degrees cooler, and then after that, the temperatures take off again. But it's the wildfire smoke that we're uh, having to deal with again. Uh, more Canadian wildfire smoke through at least Thursday. Uh, we'll see high temperatures back into the 80s beginning on Friday, lasting through the weekend and through 
pretty much all of next week and into next weekend. And only rain chance really is confined to Father's Day Sunday, and even that, just a slight chance for a shower or thunderstorm. High resolution radar, not seeing anything. Oh, well, a little tiny little shower up here in Trempeleau County. And you can see how quickly it fizzles as it drops to the south. Um, I think if there are any showers, it'll be more likely over northeastern Wisconsin, maybe toward Door County and down the uh, eastern portion of the state closer to the lake breeze. I think the rest of us will stay dry. And we're not looking at much in the way of rain. This is uh, future track rainfall through Sunday evening, and it's calling for less than a tenth of an inch of rain for Madison westward, maybe close to a quarter of an inch in a few spots near Lake Michigan. But again, there's just not a lot of rain, and a lot of people will stay dry. And then you, you put this in the motion. This is Tuesday. This is Wednesday of next week. You can see the rain amounts starting to increase across the Dakotas, where heavier showers and thunderstorms will be. But look where we are, you know, okay, a little bit of light rain possible. Uh, that would get us up to about a tenth to a quarter of an inch of rain. But I think most areas are still going to stay dry. And if you like, look at our precipitation, month to date, we're already an inch and a half below normal. And we're about halfway through the month. Since March 1st, pretty much kind of uh, close to the start of the growing season, we're down almost five inches compared to average. And year to date, we're down about three inches because we had more precipitation during January and February. But those are months that, you know, a lot of that... It falls in the form of snow and eventually melts and uh, runs off. And then we're dealing with the wildfire smoke. You can see that hazy smoke being drawn down by a cold front uh, coming southward across Wisconsin. Really uh, not much in the way of precipitation associated with it, but the upper level winds are bringing the winds uh, down from the north. And you can see how they just kind of spiral up and then come back down. They grab that wildfire smoke and dump it right into the Midwest. While the southern part of the United States is getting hammered with severe weather and heavy rain, tornadoes, uh, high winds, uh, some of the severe thunderstorms producing winds up to 90 miles an hour. So I suppose that's one good thing we can be thankful of. But an air quality advisory remains in effect until noon tomorrow for all of Wisconsin away from Lake Michigan. Uh, again, if you have uh, uh, respiratory issues, Take it easy, just uh, you know, try to stay inside as much as possible. 60 for the overnight low temperature in Mount Horeb, 58 in Mazomani, 60 in Wanakee, planning your night across Dane County, planning your night across southern Wisconsin, 61 Platteville, 59 in Prairie du Chien, and 60 for the low temperature in Fond du Lac for tomorrow. Look for skies to be partly sunny, it'll be hazy, just a little bit cooler than today with a high temperature of 78 degrees. And again, this is rainfall through Sunday evening. And it's not much. A few places getting around a tenth of an inch of rain. Most areas probably staying dry. First warn seven to ten day forecast. Once we get past Sunday, and that's just a slight chance for a shower or thunderstorm for Father's Day, dry weather, and notice the temperatures ramping back up into the upper 80s by the end of next week. And coming up in sports, the Brewers blow another early lead in Minnesota. The big inning that helped the Twins sweep the crew. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Plan your trip on Metro Transit's newly redesigned service. Visit MyMetroBus.com, call 608-266-4466, or look for ride guides and yellow vests out on the streets. Do you suffer from chronic or severe back or neck pain? Did you know that there is now a treatment method available right here at Midwest Spine and Nerve Center that offers hope of avoiding spinal surgery for those suffering with bulging, herniated, or degenerative discs? Our therapies help reduce pain related to these conditions and have a high success rate in helping people just like you avoid back or neck surgery. I have experienced low back pain for over 15 years. I had back surgery when I was 26 and had difficulties recovering. The doctors at Midwest Spine and Nerve Center have given me a new lease on life. I am now able to enjoy an active, pain-free lifestyle. Call Midwest Spine and Nerve Center now to schedule a no-obligation consultation to see if our progressive pain-relieving therapies are right for you. Water experts at Culligan can take care of everything but the kitchen sink. Actually, we do that too. Culligan, here for every water worry. Don't wait until the weekend to enjoy a thick charbroil steak made to your liking. 
Make a weeknight steak night at High Point Steakhouse, Southern Wisconsin's premier supper club. Well worth the short drive to Ridgeway. At Lawton Cates, being prepared and confronting every aspect of your injury case with honesty, integrity, and innovative solutions has earned us a reputation for excellence in representing the injured. Because at Lawton Cates, your life counts. Plan your trip on Metro Transit's newly redesigned service. Visit MyMetroBus.com, call 608-266-4466, or look for ride guides and yellow vests out on the streets. We're teeing off in the 608 for a fundraiser that honors the legacy of my brother. Tomorrow, Josh Breider shares how you can help support local students who live like Levi. That looks like the heat will be cranking up going into next week. Join us in the morning between 4.30 and 7. Never before has Lodi been to the State Girls Soccer Tournament. That is until this season. The Blue Devils finally made it to Milwaukee. And thanks to a little reminder from Joe Burkholz, this group isn't playing just for each other. They're playing for her. It's been a goal for the Lodi Girls Soccer Team for a long time. We've been talking about trying to go to state every year. That's always your goal, is you always want to go to state. And this season, yeah. the Blue Devils did it. We're getting flat blue. I feel like a lot of us didn't actually realize or like think we'd ever get to that point. Right. So it was just, I was in shock. They're state bound for the first time in program history. Kind of feels like a dream. Um, I, like I said, just a dream. We don't, like it's, it doesn't feel real. Good luck. They did it by what Joe Burkholz and his coaching staff like to call playing for her. Do it for her, do it for her, do it for her. And they really bought into it. Um, I think it really means a lot to them. Her. Good run. As in the younger versions of themselves. We chose to play soccer as a little person, and we are continuing to work hard every single day. And sure playing for the younger version of ourselves is where we wanted to be today. And the little girls watching in the stands. I think that they are really aware of that fact. Yeah, there's younger girls that are watching, and it's really fun to see. It's really fun to be that role model for those girls that are coming up. Because win or lose, the hers they're playing for. Take a look, you got tons of time. Are proud of what this team has become. For the third straight year, Jefferson advanced to the state baseball tournament, and for the third straight year, they fell to Denmark. The last two were in the Division II state final. This season, they met in the state semifinals. Eagles finished the year 24 and 7. Series finale between the Brewers and Twins. Like yesterday, the crew jumped up early. Brian Anderson goes yard, part of back-to-back -back home runs for Milwaukee. But that 2-0 lead would disappear in the third. Minnesota scored four in the frame, and the Twins hand the Brewers their sixth straight loss. 4-2 is the final Kind of at rock bottom right now if you're a Brewers fan. Okay. They're in a division where everybody else is struggling True. too. So, yeah. that's, so. Uh, that, that will help. Uh, there's a lot of haze out there right now. I'll take a look at the live view from the WIC TV Skycam. That's just hazy wildfire smoke overhead. Uh, air quality advisory continues through noon tomorrow for all of southern Wisconsin away from Lake Michigan for particulate matter from wildfire smoke. Uh, no rain really to speak of out there. Little tiny sprinkles north of uh, La Crosse, and that's about it. Temperatures range from the 60s near Lake Michigan to upper 80s over western Wisconsin right now in Dane County. Uh, still 80 in Deerfield, 81 in Middleton and 81 in uh, Mount Horeb. All right, thank you, Gary, and thank you for joining us. Have a great evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.